just friends, lovers no more. like before to think of what we've been and now to kiss again seems like pretending it isn't the Yes. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. I took a trip on a train And I thought about you I passed a shadowy lane And I thought about
talks about you But when I pull down that shade Well, yes, I really fell blue I think through the crack And look down the track The one What did I do? And what did I do? What did I do? I thought about you. Thank you very much.
Homeland, Kevin Canner. Thank you very much. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, week 32, I believe, of our little show. 33, week 33 of Steamer's Jazz at Jack's. You may notice that I'm alone. As it turns out, Terrence had a little non-COVID-related ailment that uh, is going to keep him off the show tonight. And uh, uh, frankly, I think it's just old age. But um, whatever it is, we certainly wish him well, and he'll be back with us next week. So I'm going to tackle this alone, which means uh, I'm going to have to actually say something because, you know, usually it doesn't give me a whole lot of room to talk. But um, we've got a great show tonight, two people I'm very excited about, and uh, one who uh, I've worked with a little bit and have gotten to know a little bit over the last couple of years, and then one who I've just admired from a distance for many years, and uh, gonna going to be looking forward to talking to him. And so we'll get into all that, but let's take care of a little business first, shall we? Uh, that opening video was champion Fulton from her show at Steamers last Thursday, Steamers Jazz at Jack's uh, on Thursday. And uh, I was there and I've got to say, I've uh, I've been in the audience for quite a lot of these shows that have been going on. It was just, it was one of the best. It was just so stellar. And she is really remarkable and really fantastic. And uh, I mean, really everything about her, her, her singing, her piano playing, her personality is just so engaging and so you definitely missed it if you weren't there and if you haven't watched the uh the live stream yet you can you definitely should catch that it's just really was a, a stunning show and uh, i'm sure she'll be back at some point so next time don't hesitate to get a ticket for that and i was also very lucky uh to be able to host her for dinner uh over here at our house on uh was that friday night and, uh, you know, we got around the piano and she played and sang and I played and uh, Mark Fisher was here and he played sax and we just had a great time and uh, we kept it safe. But we were having a lot of fun making some music and having dinner and uh, I actually cooked and everybody lived, although Terrence is sick right now. So maybe I need to rethink that. <laughs> um, anyways. Uh, some more stuff going on tonight after our broadcast here at 7 o'clock uh, Pacific time, so one hour from now, we're going to be going live to the stage at Campus Jacks, where Lisa Donahue will be performing um, for our Afterglow event. And Lisa's a, a she does a thing called Jazz Beret, kind of a cross between jazz and cabaret. And uh, I've gotten to know her just a little bit over the last year or so. And uh, it's sold out, so she's obviously got doing something right, and uh, you can watch that right here, right after we're done, assuming you're not uh, watching this and then heading there because you were smart enough to buy tickets. So, But let's talk about some of the other upcoming dates. This coming Thursday, October 29th, is going to be Andrea Miller with the Ron Kobayashi Trio. And uh, if if you know Andrea, you love her. She's one of the, uh, one of the favorites around Orange County for sure. And uh, she's been doing some traveling and performing around the country. And uh, so we're just happy to have her. She did play inside Campus Jacks one time. So this is only her second appearance here and her first in all the, the outdoor venue shows. Uh, Sunday, November 1st, which is next set Sunday, the Afterglow, which is after our broadcast, will be the Tom Dante Quintet uh, with special gre guest Greg Vale on sax and Dave Murdy on guitar. And uh, um, interesting, because he usually asks me to play with him, and I didn't get that call. But the very next Thursday, November 5th, I will be there with uh, my own group, but not my regular band. This is a band I'm calling a pretty dang good band. Uh, let me just run you through the, the great musicians that I've been able to get down with me for next uh, Thursday, November 5th. Bill Cantos is going to be playing keyboards and singing. Grant Geisman uh, on guitar. Uh, Lyman Medeiros on bass, uh, John Ferraro on the uh, on the drums, and then Sal Lozano on saxophone. And so it's going to be just a fantastic band. We're going to uh, switch it up, play a bunch of different music, uh, stuff I don't normally do, and some of Bill's tunes, and I'm inviting all the other guys to bring their music in as well. So that's going to be a great night, and I hope you'll come to that. Next Sunday, the Sunday after that, November 8th, we have flautist Lori Bell with Josh Nelson, Alex Frank, and Gene Coy. And uh, I think that you've probably seen them before on uh, some of these broadcasts. So obviously, you know that is worth attending. On Thursday, November 12th, Elena and George Gilliam. 
Uh, she's a fantastic singer. He's a fantastic guitar player, and they happen to be married. And so they're going to be there with their band, uh, I believe, a uh, bass player and drummer. And I don't know who they, the players are yet, but they always put something great together. And so be sure to catch that. Basically, I'm just telling you to buy tickets to every show. Sunday, November 15th, Nina Herzog is going to present uh, a show called Music by Moonlight. And Nina is this, we've had her on the show here. She's a fantastic young uh, Broadway style singer, but not limited to Broadway, but she does a lot of those great kind of Streisand, Judy Garland, Linda Ronstadt kind of big belter tunes. And she's just a powerhouse vocalist. And uh, I've gotten to do one show with her and her ensemble, and they're all great players. And that's going to be a great night. And then uh, our, our Thursday, November 19th date is being filled by Francisco Torres and his Latin band, and uh, I think it's the first Latin band we've had on the lineup, but boy, Francisco is just the guy you want to go see. So every single one of those dates, in fact, I'm just going to pause here for about 10 minutes while you go to the website, campusjacks.com, and purchase tickets to every one of those shows. I'll wait. No, I'm not going to wait. Um, all right. But keep this in mind. Um, uh, everything at Campus Jacks is socially distant. It's, it's uh, COVID safe. I mean, they take all the precautions that are necessary, masks, temperatures, hand sanitizers, disinfecting the whole thing. So it's a, uh, it's the, really about as safe an environment as you can uh, imagine going to. And it's beautiful. This the, the place is covered now. There's lights, beautiful lights, a great stage, great sound system that Golden is uh, usually at the helm of. And it just sounds, a uh, champion show the other night just sounded like you were at the, I don't know, the Hollywood Bowl. It was just a beautiful sounding show. Uh, thanks to Golden and this great QSC sound system. Um, and then there's heaters there if it gets cold. And anyways, it's it's really a great night. If you haven't been yet, you've got to come out. Um, I suggest November 5th, but really any of those nights. Um, then uh, let me see. Finally, I want to make sure I cover everything here. And you can get tickets at uh, campusjacks.com. But also, let me see, if you can't attend the shows, of course, you can stream them right here, which you're already doing right now, but steamersjazz.com, or steamersjacks.com, YouTube and Facebook, Jacks Hideaway, and Facebook Campus Jacks. And if you're enjoying all of these broadcasts and even the live shows, your support, your financial support really helps. And so if you can drop anything in that tip jar, a lot of production goes on in the background. A lot of stuff happens during the week to make these shows happen. I promise you it's not not going in my pocket. It's going to make sure that all these uh, all these people are taken care of who are trying to make this happen every week uh, for all of us. So go to steamersjacks.com. I believe it's on the website, on the screen somewhere right below me here. And if you can drop anything in there, it's very much appreciated. And our very first guest is uh, a friend of mine. I can say he's my friend now. We were introduced just a couple of years ago by a mutual friend, Carrie, uh, Carrie Larson, who's a fantastic singer. And we did a black, uh, Carrie and I did a series called the Black and White Sessions uh, YouTube series, where we put out about, I don't know, over 80, roughly 85 videos that all featured uh, a well-known, or I'm sorry, usually not very well-known singer who was, uh, basically studio singers, the people you hear on all the movie soundtracks and the albums and uh, TV commercials and TV shows, you hear them, but you don't know their names because they're the people in the studio. And that's mostly who we were featuring. So they would come in, we would feature them as the soloist. I would play piano. It was like a one take, uh, unfixed, just, you know, totally raw performance. Well, we were able to get Dorian in and you're going to meet him in a minute. And he was one of, uh, when he came in, he actually brought his friend, uh, I believe Roberto Montez, I, I'm going to have to correct that name, who's a fantastic, beautiful guitar player. And this is their performance on the Black and White Sessions. Then we'll be right back with Dorian. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Everything must change Nothing stays the same Everyone will change No one stays the same the young be 
become the old and mysteries do unfold for that's the way of time no There are not many things in life you can be sure of, except rain comes from the clouds, the sun lights up the sky. And hummingbirds do fly. Winter turns to spring. A wounded heart will heal, but never. Much too soon. Yes, everyone will change. The young become the old, and mysteries do unfold. For that's the way. Of time, nothing and no one goes unchanged. There are not many things in life you can be sure. Except rain comes from the clouds, the sun lights up the sky, and hummingbirds do fly. Rain comes from the clouds, the sun lights up the sky, hummingbirds. Comes from the clouds, sun lights up the sky. Hummingbirds do fly. Rain, don't you know they come from clouds? Hummingbirds. And music makes me cry. Everything must change. Everything must change. Dorian Holly is one of LA's most in demand vocalists. He's worked with artists like James Taylor and Rod Stewart, but is most noted for his long tenure as Michael Jackson's main backup vocalist and vocal director from 1987 until Jackson's untimely death in 2009. 
Dorian was the featured vocalist on Dancing with the Stars for three years, and he was associate music director and vocal coach on American Idol. He later served as house vocalist for The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Please welcome Dorian Hawley to Steamer's Jazz at Jack's. Uh, that, of course, was Dorian Hawley, and uh, this is right next to me, Dorian Hawley. How are you, Dorian? Hey, man. How's it going? Good. I think you were having some issues, and you maybe can't see me, but it's probably just as well, because I don't have a shirt on, so... Oh God! <laughs> well, go go put your brazier on, and yeah, and but we'll, we'll wait. It's great to see you, my friend. Oh, and look, and you've got a little little cocktail. So do I. So who's who's talking? Is that Tony? It's all. It's going to be all me. You jo normally it's uh, Terrence is joining us, but he uh, was ill tonight, so he's staying home and not doing the broadcast. So it's just you and me, Dorian. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, all right. Two hours of conversation. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Oh, joy. <laughs> well, it's good to see you, man. It's good to um, see you. Everything all just, right? Are we you... just ran that video uh, of when I first met you, the black and white session with you. And was that Roberto Montez? Is that his name? Roberto Montero. 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 Yeah. yeah fantastic yeah, guitar yeah. player. Isn't he great? Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's uh, my Brazilian friend. His um, and he he learned guitar from his dad, who's also a great uh, player and who still lives in Brazil. Oh, nice! And uh, you know, we met. Um, we both were teaching at uh, uh, L.A. College of Music and uh, L.A. Music College. I changed the name a couple of times yeah. in Pasadena, and um, he's been playing with me for me and my band, leading my band ever since we met, like nearly twenty years ago. Yeah. 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 I remember when he came in, because um, there was, you know, most of those videos, I ended up just playing piano. And half the time I felt like the wrong guy to be doing it. And I was so glad you brought him in. One, because it's just great to have a great guitar player in my book who can play that style of music and uh, uh, and just such a sweet guy, too. But let's talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd much rather talk about you, Tony. <laughs> Honestly, really. <laughs> Tell me first uh, how it's been going uh, for you during quarantine. What have you been doing to keep busy? What, what ended? What What are you looking forward to? Well, um, you know, as you well know, music has been really, really difficult. So uh, for me, I took the time to get my studio together and was just completely uninspired to uh, to write, to play. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of meandered for months as we, uh, as, as many did, you know, trying to keep the family from going crazy and uh, trying to support my wife, who's a, a very, very supremely busy lawyer. My, uh, my youngest daughter, who's, uh, you know, uh, in her last year of high school now. And, um, and so I, uh, so I've done a couple of music jobs, but um, but you know, funny thing happened. I, I, we we were having dinner with some friends, and we both were. Uh, and and uh, one of the men and I were just talking. We both like old cowboy TV shows, and we were talking. Uh -huh. And I was asking him for recommendations, and we all had seen the same stuff, and neither of us had anything new to offer the other. And uh, like a, a week or two after that, I woke up in the middle of the night and just started writing a cowboy show, the cowboy show that we both wish we could watch. Wow. So I've, I've, I've written a script that I really like and I think has some merit. I'm tightening that up. Um, I started making uh, dog food for my dogs, homemade dog food. One of the things that, that I've always <laughs> wanted to do and never had time to do. Started fixing stuff around the house, painting and getting things fixed and, you know, and then slowly started making my way into back, back into making some music and, right. uh, you know, singing some stuff, went out and did a, went out and did a few jobs and uh, um, just recently uh, worked on a, 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 a Christmas special for uh, Carrie Underwood, who oh, nice. was, was on American Idol. Like, I think right. she was on like the first year I started. Yeah. So, you know, you know, just trying to figure it out, trying to figure out if uh, how to change, how to pivot, you know, uh, and right. how, to, how to do something different in music. Well, that's been so, one of the interesting things in talking to, uh, to so many people during this is how many people have kind of explored all the things that they put off and always said, Oh, someday I'll do that. And how many people did that and found other areas of interest outside of music when you couldn't do any music. 
And uh, and then also you mentioned studio, like the, the amount of people I've seen get their studio together at home. Finally, you know, it's been been really interesting as well. But let's go back to the the cowboy movie, because, you know, what every great cowboy movie needs is a, a spaghetti Western theme song that features the trumpet. I don't know if you are aware of that, but <laughs> let's just let's just plant that in your head right now. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah. Um, in in my show, uh, I've got a, a a Michael Jackson tune that I've I've uh, uh, into that I interpret, and um, I have my I have Roberto yeah. <laughs> play that line at the intro uh -huh. of the song. You know, <laughs> I mean, I I won't start until he plays that 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 I love that. I love to hear right, that. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, that, listen, that, that's, a, that's a good segue because I know we're introducing introducing you to a lot of the Campus Jacks audience tonight. And uh, I'd love to talk to you a little bit about the Michael Jackson run because obviously that was a huge, huge, still is a huge part of your life and your uh, your professional life. And um, tell, tell me how that started with you. Wow. Well, it was the it, it was my first year. Uh, it was my second professional gig. Uh, wow. it, was my, it was my first year uh, making a living as a musician. Um, so uh, I, um, that new, the New Year's, New Year's 1986, I asked my wife um, what, you know, what I was doing wrong, what I could do differently, which she thought I could, how I could, she, you know, just some ideas. I was, we were making our resolutions and I was asking for suggestions. And um, she uh, she offered that uh, what you need is you need to meet someone who's in the business who can help you. Basically, that was it. And so that was my resolution and my prayer that uh, New Year's 1986. That next month, I met uh, Daryl Fennessy, who um, uh, we were both auditioning for a, a for a gig, uh, singing lead on a a, a jazz record. And um, while I was being put through the paces for, for nearly two hours by uh, an artist who will go unnamed, uh, <laughs> Daryl was outside um, listening and he heard me singing. And so when we met before, as he was on his way in, we met and talked a few minutes and he couldn't believe that we, he couldn't believe number one, that I wasn't making a living singing. And number two, that we, we hadn't met before. And so he invited me to come to his house that night. We went, I went over and met him and had dinner and, um, and uh, he started sending me demo work because he had gotten to the place in his career where he didn't need to do that so much anymore. Right. So he started sending me demo work and uh, he got uh, Philip Ingram, James Ingram's brother, to send me his uh, passed over demo work. And then um, a couple of months later, Daryl called me to sing on a Stevie Wonder record, which was the thrill of my life. I bet, yeah. Uh, and um, which uh, record was that? It, it was uh, it was characters, and uh, uh, one of the songs was in Die Hard. It's the song where the the limo driver is sitting in the car uh, in the uh, in the basement of the of the not right. the, uh, the the building listening to uh, Stevie Groove, and and we're on that song. And um, uh, then several months later in July, uh, Daryl called me one Sunday. I just read the Times that Michael Jackson was about to embark on a year long tour. And he called and asked if I wanted to audition for that. And um, we auditioned, we got that gig, and um, uh, you know, I went around the world a couple of times. Well, but you, you obviously made a bigger impression than just uh, pulling off a, a tour or two because you, you were with him a long time and you ended up being a music director or, or a vocal director, right? So he obviously yeah. had a lot of faith in you and, and must have loved you, yeah. It was a great, it was, I still struggle to try to describe what it was like. I mean, it was, yeah. it was, you know, uh, it, obviously with him being gone, it's even harder right. to, uh, to even uh, accept that it was, that it was real because I look at, you know, I watched, uh, I watched some of our concert shows uh, a couple of months ago. And it was, it was like it happened to somebody else. It re yeah. I mean, honestly, it really was. But it was a great, great experience. Um, yeah, he, you know, he 
he had a, a <laughs> more more uh, trust in my ability than I had, and mm. um, uh, you know he used to get me to double him all the time. And when it when it'd be a call and, call and response thing, he'd have me do most of it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and, uh, and 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 I was honored to you know to have the task of being vocal MD on the on the the, the faithful last tour, right. which started and no sooner than it started it was it was done it was all over uh but yeah it was a it was a rich rich experience um my my eldest daughter um you know got to experience a lot of that which of course she doesn't remember because she was you right. know three four five and six when all of that stuff was happening uh curiously also um a few weeks ago a friend sent me uh, she was like a super Michael fan and she ended up getting a job on uh, one of the tours with us. And she sent me uh, home movies of, um, you know, stuff on the bus on the way to the gig and shopping and going out to dinner and yeah. um, stuff. I, I, even watching those videos with me in them and with my daughter in them, I still can't, oh, remember, can't remember doing any of those things. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at that and going, wow, I, I you know, my blackout. Right, right. You know, it was it was just so long ago. Uh, sure. You know, some of it was nearly thirty years ago. Um, so it's you know, and, there's, and a, there's a whole. Huh? I'm sorry. Did you ever end, end up in the studio with him too? You know what? I never sang in the studio with him. I I, I never did. Um, uh, you know, I, I there was the you no know, there was one yeah. one thing that almost happened. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, a group of us were in the studio waiting for uh, for it to to come off, like all day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I I don't know if he ever showed up, but I I know I, after after many hours of waiting, I left. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I, I, that's one thing I can't put on. I guess I could put it on my, my resume. I could lie about it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, n I never did get to do that. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of people outside of the business don't realize that um, uh, the touring bands and the recording bands are often very different for a lot of artists. And and uh, I've never, I mean, I I understand it as a musician. I understand in some ways there are some people who bring something live that is just missing from other players, and then some, and then they get in the studio and it's just a different thing, and and vice versa. Um, and so, yeah, I think a lot of people are often often surprised that it's it's kind of two. It can be two different worlds. Yeah, it it can. Obviously, it, you're a studio guy, but and in Michael's case, um, for the studio stuff, he sang all of his own his own vocals uh, on right. the, the records. And then when he'd call a choir, he would call Andre Crouch, and Andre would bring his choir and his people. Right. And um and so um you know there'd be Andre Crouch's choir along with the Winans and along with you know, uh, people that were in Quincy's circle, you know, Saida Garrett and right, right. Jim Gilstrap and, and, um, and James Ingram. But I, I would, you know, when, when a, the, another tour would resume and we have a record, it'd be vocals on there. I would always look at it and like go, no, why didn't you <laughs> right. call me? Yeah. I don't <laughs> understand how this works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, it can be frustrating. I, I got the dogs, honey. <laughs> um let's uh let's switch gears a little bit and tell me a little bit about the whole um, american idol experience uh, which is i think the first time i saw you and was aware of your face and name before long before we met was seeing you on american idol as, uh, as one of the vocal coaches not a contestant right um uh I, I I had met Ricky Minor. Uh, we were he was touring with Whitney Houston, and uh, and I was touring with MJ. The first time we met, we happened to be in the same country together, and bumped into each other a couple of times in the airport, or you know, uh, uh, he came to one of one of our gigs in Germany, and um, and I had um, I had found out about him and tried to get on his radar, as as we do. And um, at some point he would, you know, Ricky would, Ricky would call you for a gig and, you know, you see how that go and, and, and time would pass and then he might call you for another gig. Um, so over the period of a couple of years, he'd called me for three or four gigs. And um, then the, uh, the singer strike hit, which was a big, big strike. It was like, a, I think it was a singer actor or a singer writer strike. 
which went on for about two years, uh, almost two years. And um, a friend uh, was going out on, on tour with uh, Fleetwood Mac and asked me to fill in with them at the, the Music Academy in Pasadena. So I taught a class there. They liked me and they asked me to stay on. I ended up um, creating a couple of classes there, one of which was a vocal performance class, which is um, the, you know, the thing that I know the most about. Mm -hmm. And after teaching that, that class for three or four semesters, uh, Ricky called and he said, hey man, I'm starting on this new music show. And um, at the time I also was singing on Dancing with the Stars, um, which was lucky because they were in the same studio right next to each other. And um, he said, I, you know, what, what I love about what he said is this. He said, I think you have the right disposition for this job. Uh, which meant a lot to me. So um, when when American Idol started, they had one uh, person in the music department that, that became two people, and that went on for like three years. Two right. people, a vocal co coach and a and an accompanist, did uh, all of the uh, the music for right. you know forty people. Um, that's coaching, recording, uh, right. all of that. So anyway, uh, they hired Ricky the third year to, to uh, create a music department, and I was a part of that department. So then we had two coaches, one for the girls, one for the boys. And um, so I went, and, and fortunately, as, as fate would have it, what I learned, what I was teaching and what I learned in uh, class at, at the college it prepared me to do that gig. Um, and, uh, so I had, um, you know, a feel for what to do. Uh, I didn't have to learn it all, you know, right by the seat of my pants and I had a vocabulary for it. And, right. um, and so, you know, that happened, uh, as American Idol was, was exploding on, on, on the world. And I, I was fortunate to be there for, for 11 years. Yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a it was a lot of fun, a lot of pressure, uh, uh, tough gig, um, great gig. Well, you you gave me another nice segue because we only have a couple minutes left. But you mentioned vocal performance, and I just want to let you know that there's a, a beautiful COVID safe stage at Campus Jacks, and uh, it I kind of heard great. about it'd, that. It'd be great to get you out there one week uh, to to come out and do your thing. I know that when you have done the Festival of Arts, your, the audiences just love you and your band. And so it'd be great to get you down here as well during this. It's, you know, frankly, it's one of the few real performing venues going on right now, so. I know, so I can consider this an invitation then, yeah? It's an invitation, absolutely. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take you up on it. Yeah, so uh, we're well, Wait, now hang on a second. Now, I just found out today that um, your, your, uh, your stereo, your yeah. one stereo that I saw has turned into Something ginormous. What are, what are we talking about? What is this? Do we have to talk about this off camera or? Uh, no. Well, you know, I, uh, for those who don't know, I have a, a very beloved 1960 Grundig Majestic stereo console that Dorian covets. Mm, and, um, mm, mm. Um, but I don't have, I don't have another console. I do have, uh, I did pick up a few other things. I have a, a 1921 Victrola. I have <laughs> a, a 1919 radio, like a big, the, the radio I can't describe, but it's just this beautiful work of art. Uh, it's metal. It's not wood. It's just this gorgeous what? thing. Did and you take? You took a second mortgage out of the house? No, no. I just waste my money on things I don't need. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but then my my wife and I also uh, decided to do a little vintage shop that we do kind of for fun on the side. And uh, I've ended up buying a few consoles and selling them and oh, doing nice. that kind of thing. So oh, nice. yeah, okay. Yeah. It's a fun little thing, but you know, yeah, you got to get your own. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll just go, or you know, I, I might be happy just coming over and seeing what you got. I got to see All the right, well, stuff. Fair, fair enough, <laughs> Dorian. <laughs> thank you for joining us and uh, for for talking. And it was, uh, it was, I'm sorry, what was that? I'm hearing something in my ear. Oh yeah, yeah. Tell tell us about your band. If if we get you down to Campus Jacks, who we, might we see with you? Well, it, it, well, it depends on on what um how, on you the know money. how. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find a way to. No, I mean it depends on how what we can bring down. I mean I, I have a, a a four you know four piece band um, which uh, I've had for you know that yeah, which is amazing. Roberto Montero. Uh, Matt Rohde, who you may know, Tony. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Dion Kazi on drums, and my 
my bassist, uh, Philip Bino, has moved to Arizona, but he comes back. He can yeah. come back, you know, he'll swim back. Um, right. and, but also I have, as, as you know, the, the Marvin Gaye show that, that has right. been huge for us, um, which is a huge band, strings, horns, singers, the oh, whole wow. bit. And, uh, and we got to do that last year down at the, uh, the yeah, Festival yeah. of the Arts. Well, um, that, that might have to wait till after COVID just because the amount of people on stage. Yeah, they probably, yeah, be, they probably that would be a great great yeah. night for sure but yeah. we'll have to get yeah. your uh, the first version of that band down there and well we'll we would love to come we'll, we'll talk and figure it out tony yeah right on okay great to, great to see you and talk to you dorian thanks for having me i appreciate it and, and and may god bless all uh the people that are watching may everyone stay safe and sane yes thank you and we'll talk to you soon <laughs> okay god bless bye-bye right, take care All right, so I, I guess I, I don't know what's going on on screen right now, but I will tell you that uh, I hope you enjoy that. Dorian's a great guy, and um, and uh, as you can tell, just has an. I mean, we barely tapped into his history, but but that's a guy who has done an awful lot. You you need to maybe Google him and look up some of the other amazing things he's done, and uh, and you can find videos of him performing. We wanted to run a, a, another of the black and white sessions. We had a little problem with the video, but he came back and did another one with his daughter, Nayana, who is also just an amazing vocalist. And so they did a duet together. Um, and uh, so you, you should check that out, the black and white sessions on YouTube. And uh, let's talk a little bit. Of, remember, uh, in case you've joined us late uh, at seven o'clock in just about uh, 25 minutes, 24 minutes from now, uh, we are going to be cutting to the stage live at Campus Jacks. And Lisa Donahue will be performing her uh a mix of cabaret and jazz tunes and uh, with her basically like a, a what she's calling her little big band and a few other dates just to run you through the, the next couple. Uh, Andrea Miller with Ron Kobayashi Trio on Thursday, October 29th. Tom Dante Quintet on Sunday, November 1st. My group on the 5th, uh, which is a again, I'm going to run through the players. I'm calling it the pretty dang good band, but it's Bill Cantos on piano and vocal, Grant Geisman on guitar. Lyman Medeiros on bass, John Ferraro on drums, and Sal Lozano on saxophone, and that's going to be on Thursday, November fifth. So we'll hope we hope you'll uh, join us there, and uh, you can also check campusjacks.com for the full lineup of all the shows. There are some shows going on that are not part of the jazz series, but some other bands that play uh, on different nights. I believe it's four nights a week at Campus Jacks right now, which uh, you know if, if you're if you're paying attention, there's not a lot of venues around town that are able to do live music and Campus Jacks has been doing it right since the beginning. So they've been set up and it's it's, you know, one of the only games in town. And I would I would venture to say definitely the best game in town for live music these days. So uh, let me see where we're going now. Finally, if you want to help out again to keep these shows being broadcast, throw a little something in the tip jar if you can at steamersjacks.com. And uh, we're about to introduce you to uh, a guy who I've known about for many years and uh, been a, 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 a an admirer from a distance and tonight's the first night i'll get a chance to actually talk to him uh outside of the occasional facebook hello that we've had over the last couple of years but um let's just uh we're going to cut to a little intro video and then we'll, we'll be right back with our friend jason miles <laughs> Since the late 1970s, Jason Miles has established himself as one of the industry's leading keyboard players, having worked closely with some of the all-time greats, most notably with Miles Davis, Marcus Miller, and Luther Vandross. His own solo career has spanned several decades, and his session work includes landmark recordings by Aretha Franklin, Diana Ross, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, and many, many more. Jason won a Grammy for his album A Love Affair, The Music of Yvonne Linz, and his tribute to saxophonist Grover Washington Jr., called To Grover With Love, was nominated as Album of the Year by the National Smooth Jazz Awards. Please welcome Jason Miles to Steamer's Jazz at Jack's. I'm live. Oh, look at that. Live TV, everybody. So Jason is with us, but he's uh, having a little technical difficulty. So he's stepping out and coming back in and hopefully we'll have a better connection because I promise you, I cannot talk for this long without somebody to talk to. 
nor do you want to listen to me try to do that. So hopefully Jason will be right back with us. Um, and uh, Jason, mm -hmm. but, uh, I'm not, all I can tell you about Jason, because we've never met face to face, is that I've known of his work for many years, uh, primarily because of, of his work with Miles Davis. But, uh, you know, as a trumpet player, as Miles Davis is sort of... Uh, um, it's like 101, like you have to know Miles Davis music and, and Jason did a lot of work with him, but also with a lot of others, uh, Marcus Miller and uh, he, I mean, he's really kind of worked with everybody and uh, he's, he's based on the East Coast. So uh, he, that's like a whole different network and, and he's come back, oh, is he back in? Jason, how are you? Yes. Oh, I think that's a lot better. Yeah, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, so we're, we're live right now and, uh, I've been awkwardly stalling for a second, but uh, but looks like we've got you good. So, um, hey, it's uh, really nice to meet you face to face. And like I, I said earlier, I'm a longtime admirer of your work and uh, have known your name for many years. And, uh, you know, it just just I appreciate you joining us tonight. Totally fine with not much going on. I mean, there's always <laughs> stuff going on, but I mean, it's not like, you know, just pressing for time or I'm going somewhere or whatever. I mean, here we sure. are, you know, we've been at this place for eight months now you know yeah yeah well I, it, I would say watching you uh on just following you on facebook you've uh you seem to keep a lot of creative things going which is great a lot of people are just kind of floundering and it seems like you've got stuff no going. that's not me you know i i've hung around with too many creative people in my whole life you know what i mean and like you know no matter where it goes to or whatever you know the if i feel the music you know i have to get it out you know and have to play and practice you know, I mean, you know, no matter what the story is, I mean, to be able to sit down while there are people out there, man, who just are like, you know, drinking at 10 a.m. in the morning and, you know, this right. is the day, watch TV, watch this, there's nothing new. You know, me, you know, I can go and play the piano, you know, and, uh, and or, or work in my studio, you know, I'm setting up a whole new Pro Tool system next week, you know. How are you? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's time, you know, time to upgrade. You need a faster computer, you know, uh, but, but although who knows what the future is, you know, I'm going this on like, you know, just because it's time to upgrade, not because there's 5 million things going on and everything. I'm producing a couple of really good people right now yeah. that I have great hope that I have great hope for. Although, you know, hope lies with a lot of luck in this business these days about how you can get to that place, you know? Right. I mean, right. I, was, I was watching a show tonight on Showtime, uh, a series for the, about the comedy store in LA, you know? Yeah. And, you know, they were just like, you know, tons and tons and tons of comics you know how do you get out there how do you break through well you know right now we have tons and tons and tons of artists out there because you know when i look back years and i see like you know if, if there was an apple playlist user i probably would have known all the artists that were there because they were such great and iconic artists and even the ones that you didn't know you know they had a little something happening now i look at these names and i have no idea who Nine percent of the people are out there, you know. Right. And, I'm, and and I'm trying, you know. But then when I go and actually when I listen to some of the music, I go, well, now I know why I don't know who they are. Because you know? <laughs> because you know, it's not that it's not that difficult to you know go and put your stuff out there. I mean, I you know, like it opened up one night to me when I was at a I I went to see a friend play, and somebody came up to me, oh hey Jason Miles, I'm going. You know how you doing? Always, you know, be nice to people and everything. You know, how you doing? You know, yeah. You know, like, what do you do? And I was like, well, I, I do this, but I'm, I'm, I'm really a keyboard player though. But I'm doing this, you know, you know, which, which, right. you know, which, you know. Okay, well, that, well, that's great. You know, well, the way that I see it is that you know, you, you and I, we do the same thing. I mean, my music's on Apple, to Apple iTunes, and everything. You know what I mean? But, and I just said to myself, do I be cool, or do <laughs> I just say something to this guy like, well, uh. Have you seen how many streams you got, or have you seen how many people bought your stuff, or anything like that? You know, right. and I just go to time. I hold, I, I hold my tongue, and like, <laughs> like, somebody like like a Larry David wouldn't or something like that. You know, but you know, but I but but I I I realize you know that I like this, but at the same point, it's distressing to me a lot of times because, you know, it's like I hear these piano players now. You know, oh my God. Some of these guys got chops like you can't freaking believe. Insane. And right. then I look, I'm saying to myself, you know, what are they what are they doing, man? They're playing like Nicholas Slominski Thesaurus of Scales, you know what I mean? All right. the way through, you know. You know, because like you know, obviously obviously I'm really 
you know, myself, just because of the history that goes back and everything. And I'm, I'm really torn up about Keith Jarrett, you know? Right. And, yeah. And, and just to let people know, Keith Jarrett, one of the all time great piano players had a stroke a couple years ago and, and it looks like he, he won't be able to return to playing piano. And that's kind of well, hit the, the community. I think he's beyond, I mean, in a lot of ways, he's really beyond just like, you know, even one of the all time great piano players. I mean, he's a right. force. He, he's a force yeah. that created you know, different, different things. I mean, you know, when you hear him in the, in the trio and everything, you know, I mean, oh, the, the expression and the interplay that those guys have, the only time I ever really heard that was with like Bill Evans and his really great trios, you know, and right. maybe Korea some and everything, but even Keith and Jack DeJanette and Gary Peacock, they were able to go and explore beautiful things together. So anyway, I heard the song, you know, I was listening to an Apple playlist because I played Keith all day in the house and it's like, you know, I, I heard Point Siana, you know that song, you know, duh, yeah, yeah. Duh, 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 you know, it is so easy. It's, it's such a basic song, but oh my God, what you can do with those notes is something else. And I would rather have those notes than, than sit down and have a whole bunch of shit going by people that they're never going to remember. Right, right. After you leave. And that was the most important thing to me because, you know, Miles Davis always taught me, you know, like about, like, you know, about, about Bitches Brew because I was fascinated with Bitches Brew. Right. And, and, you know, and, and what the story is, 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 is that, you know, well, how does it, how does it become a song when you really don't know if there's a song there, you know, and, and, and yet you listen and you go, I get it, you know, anybody, and it's, and it's like, you know, set the tone, make a melody, make a simple melody, and then let the guys create in front of the audience. Right. And that's been like my formula with my kind of new project, you know, I have right. these. Yeah, I, have, I you know I have, have have really cool like motifs and lines and everything that the audience can really hang on to, but then we go and we start to you know explore each other with it and everything, staying within the groove, right? And, you know, and in Europe it it works incredible. Yeah. You know? But you know? what about what about in New York? You finding an audience for it in New York? Um. Well, I don't know because the new album came out March tenth. Oh, got it. And, but I played the Blue Note before with this project, and we sold out. We sold out twice at the Blue Note, so that oh, was okay. really good. And I played at some other places and everything with it. And then I went to I go to Europe, and I I toured with that over there. And you know the audiences in Europe, man, are just like they're at another place. You know right. what I mean? By they, and especially when you have some kind of legacy or something. You know, I mean, all people got to know. Oh, you did Tutu, and you did Luther, and. You know, and then you know, hey, I have your record miles to miles, and uh, you know what I mean. You know, you try to keep things moving with them, so they realize, you know, they'll like what you're giving them is something that's you and right. real. You know, over here, I don't know over here what we're looking for. You know what I mean? Right. You know, because, because, because it just seems that there's, there's people that that like dictate what the scene should be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rather than like you know, well, you know, like back in the '70s and '80s, well, the scene is what the musicians make it. You know. Right. Right. No, the I, scene. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I, I felt that happening. You know, I, I didn't really get started until the very late 80s. And within a, within about four years or so, I, I remember that a lot of the uh, the radio stations seemed to be get, getting bought up by, I think, a company called Broadcast Architecture at the time. Well, they know Broadcast Architecture was a consulting company. Oh, OK. They, they, they were bought up by, you know, by like, you know, Clear Channel. Right, right. I just remember it became very business and very all of a sudden we were being told oh, yeah. what you had to record, what it's oh, yeah. oh yeah. All and, that. see, and and that's what the problem that I had that that's the problem that I had with like smooth jazz. Myself, right. I'm like I'm like a contemporary musician to look at it. I'm like I don't I, I'm not a I'm, I'm not a, a, a straight ahead player. I'm not this player. I'm a hybrid player. I, I, I bring the different styles and with what I do that I've been influenced by and everything. Right. You know, and, and, and I've been able to develop what I think is my, you know, my thing, you know. Yeah. But when you went to that place, you had guys like, like in the early 90s, you had like, you know, and even before that, you know, you had like what was called NAC. Right. Called New Adult Contemporary. Right. And it, it, there was no jazz or anything in there like, like that, even though it, it, it was leading to jazz. But you would hear Pat Metheny on there. You would hear and and, and I mean, some of the really great cuts that were so incredibly melodic, you know. Right. And they broke foreplay and everything like that, you know, and, and bands like that. And all of a sudden this came in and the whole thing, all of a sudden, it's like they couldn't compete in the business because they weren't playing, you know, smooth R&B. 
which right. is really what it is. There's no doubt yeah. about it. It, it, it. There's no doubt about it. People can cover up this. And, and you know, I was talking today with actually, I was talking today actually with a guy that I, I, I worked with for many years with Luther Vandross, Paul Brown, who's a big, oh yeah, who, yeah who's, a, who's, who, who's a big producer. And he said, you know, man, you know, that they had a, they had a group and all like, you know, a party for his dad and all these great cats that he produced and worked with were there and everything. And the topic was like, man, they would wish that somebody would change the title and not call it smooth jazz because, 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 because there's never been one musician that I ever met that liked that title. Right. You know? Right. But that, but, but they didn't give a shit about us. Yeah. They just gave a shit about where the revenue was coming in. Right. You know, and the revenue was coming in off of like lifestyle music. It was, you know, it right. wasn't even uh, jazz anymore. It's not jazz. Jacuzzi, jacuzzi music. And, yeah. It is. Well, yeah. Yacht rock or whatever the hell they call it. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, so, you know, you know, so you kind of see what, 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 what's going on. You know, it, it's such a, it's such a, a, a different thing, you know, because like I, I look at myself and I started this journey in 1974. I really started in like back in the 60s because I used to play in bands and I used to travel yeah. with my band. I used to play in the Catskill Mountains and everything. I mean, I, I got a lot of education before. But then coming back to New York and, and, and putting yourself in the middle of a whole other dynamic, you know, you had to see how you could grow with it and everything. You right. Know? And, that's what, and that's what I think that, that people don't have the time to do, that these young players don't have a chance to grow and experience. They got to come out and all of a sudden, like everybody's got their own CD or CDs or everybody's got their own this. You know, they got my own band, you know, my, my, own, my own this. And, you know, and, and, and it's like, you know, well, that's not how great music was created. Great music was created because you know, people apprenticed, you right. know, and, and, you know, and, and then they weren't big stars when they came on, you know, they were like, you know, the, they, they were guys that, 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 that had those kind of bands that were leaders that, that had young cats playing with them and that had people coming through the bands that were awesome players, you know, just like, like Horace Silver had the Brecker brothers and had, you know, uh, Bob Berg and Tom yeah. Harrell, you know, and, and, and so, you know, so you got to see that. And, and then you got to see guys like Bob James who, was like just mind mind blowing when you think about you know that 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 some of the music that he wrote about was so simple and so there and but then when you start to play it, you go, this ain't so easy, man. Right, there's right. A, there's a lot of stuff going on in the middle of this thing, man, that people ain't like checking out. You know. Well, I, mean, I was just. But, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say no, I, was, no, no. I was just with a, a bunch of uh, musicians this week who are all like in their r roughly early twenties, really great players, uh, fantastic. Yeah musicians but uh we were talking about uh when i started out my very first record deal back back then it was a big deal to have a record deal you not Woo. nobody had, nobody had home studios nobody you know yeah. nowadays literally everybody can put out an album and it wasn't like that back right. then and, and you you had to you had to work hard and, and like oh, you said please. apprentice and get there and absolutely come on man you know it took me before I was before I even went into a recording studio, no, I went into recording studios. But before anybody ever asked me to really work on something and do something, it was three years, right. four years, you know. It's like, wow, I got you know this just happened, and I was young, I was twenty two, you know. Yeah. And you know, but you know, but I felt that I was doing this because some of the older players were respecting me as far as you know what I what I brought to them, and you know just how I reacted with them. Like I'm like one of my first times. When I was back in 74, um, you know, within the first two weeks that I was home, I saw Weather Report playing at a, at a, at a place in New Jersey, and, and it was like a, a huge, like, disco. And, <laughs> and you know, and, and I got to go and see them, and, and, and what happened was that after they started playing, everybody left, you know? And, uh -huh. uh, and, and then there was like 50 of us left, because they were just there, like, it was a pickup place, you know? And, uh, you know, bands like that, hey, you want me to play here? This is where the gig is, you know. But they were having fusion bands and everything play there. And went right. to go see there. And, you know, Joe Zavondel became a really, really good friend of mine for 30 yeah. years, you know, for, for 30 years. And it's like, you know, I was at the place where, like, I, I wanted to know what's going on with him. You know, he doesn't right. know what's going on with me because I ain't got nothing to say right now, you know, except yeah. for what my knowledge is of what I knew and that I was really into the instruments, you know, like, and playing the instruments and, you know, you know, creating something for myself with that, which is what I did. And right. I didn't realize that at the time. I realized it because, you know, uh, I'm in New York and I'm looking around. I'm saying to myself, I don't know how you're going to break into the scene in New York here, man, because uh, the competition is like just unbelievable. 
you right. know it's unbelievable man i mean you know you're like number 100 down on the list you know what i mean with like you know you got richard t and you know and herbie was doing dates back then even you know and so was chick korea you know even though chick had, had started breaking out of that but but i mean there was richard t you know who was like my, everybody's hero richard was a god you know and yeah, exactly. uh and, and you, 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 you would be surprised how many young players have no idea who, who Richard T is. Right, right. There, there's a young guy out there, and I'm not going to bring, I'm not going to, I don't like mention names, but he's a, he's, he's on the scene. This guy's a great freaking player. And he was yeah. a nice guy. And after he played with not, I went over and I introduced myself. And I said, oh, I really enjoy, I love your record. Oh, man, that's really nice. I know who you are, blah, 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 blah. It's really cool. And I said, let me ask something, man. Do you know who Richard T is? <laughs> no, I don't know who Richard T is. I'm going, okay, you don't have to listen to me, but go back home, put on YouTube, look at Richard T, and every uh, time, you know, you come, you know, right. just, just, you know, just, just see what he said, but go and do it. I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going, great, you know? Yeah. And so uh, I was at this uh, jazz congress in New York, and I came out, and I was down on the streets, and I hear this guy yelling, Hey, hey, Jason Miles, Jason Miles. And I look at it, and, and with the cat, I'm going, hey, man, what's going on, man? He goes, Richard fucking T, man. You know? <laughs> and I was like, all right, all right. Well, he there gets, you go. That's, he yeah, gets that's, some, that's he what gets, it takes some time. He gets it. Well, hey, man, you know, good. Oh, I, I was going to say, like, I, I'm, we, we, uh, we're, cutting, we're cutting to a live show at 7 o'clock, okay. which means okay. – I, I could talk to you for like another two hours because I know you've no got problem. so much history. But let, I'm going to ask a, one one thing, if you don't mind, because, you know, as a trumpet sure. player, I have to ask. Can you tell me a little sure, bit man. about how you started with Miles? And Yeah, well, you know, I had been working uh, through, uh, you know, the, the the story how I got there is, is is long. But like basically, basically, Michael Brecker started telling a lot of people about what I was doing with synthesizers. And he was telling different right. producers. And so I was getting gigs. But all of a sudden, I started getting like the bump up gigs where like, you know, other people would get them. And I would always say, you know, man, I could do that. Gig. I could do that. But, you know, but they were more maybe on the scene, a couple of guys that were there, you know. Yeah. But Michael started telling people. And the next thing you know, you know, I started working with uh, uh, Lenny White uh, because Michael introduced us. And, and, and through Lenny, Lenny, who I and I knew Marcus Miller because Marcus had played on my first album. Yeah. And so I knew Marcus and he was on, he was like 19, 20. And so Lenny called me up and told me that they were going to be working on a new album and that they wanted me to come in the studio and, and bring my keyboards and synths and everything. So I went and I brought my synths and after the first day, the stuff was sounding amazing, it sounded fantastic. Because back then the producers, starting in the mid 80s, they needed a synth guy. Right, you know, right. You needed like a great synth guy with you if you were going to go anywhere. It's the truth, you know, I mean, because yeah. it was taken over. It was taking over the, you know, everything, you know. And so what happened was that Marcus and I started working together. You know, we were working together. We did David Sanborn, uh, Straight to the Heart. And we did right, a few great, other great things, album. Other things. You know, we, we did a few other things, you know, Chicago song. He wrote the freaking song in my my freaking bedroom. He was a working. Really? Movie. Chicago song? Yeah. I love yeah, it. Chicago That's song, yeah. Tune. Yeah, it was. It was, it was, it was, that was, that was fun. Um, and so, you know, so one day he, he just, you know, calls me up. We've done a bunch of stuff, you know, and he called me up and he goes, man, Miles, man, Miles Davis, man, is is, is on Warner Brothers now. Going, what? You know, it's crazy. And he goes, yeah, Tommy, Tommy Puma signed him, man, and uh, they want me to write some stuff. And um, and I, you know, man, I want to do some demos, man, but I want to make these killer, man. You want to bring some keyboards over tomorrow, and uh, we'll lay down some tracks and everything like that. And I said, yeah, great. So I heard Tutu like the first time we put together that demo, and I'm going, I don't see how he doesn't go for this stuff, man. You know. He goes, well, yeah. you never know, man. You know, I don't see anything. You know, but came back and two days later, you know, sending the FedEx out to LA and everything. Come back, and, you know, he got the gig, and then wow. the next thing, you know, you know, I'm in the studio with them, and uh, you know, I meet Miles. You know, it was a deep moment for sure. Scared the shit out of me. Not, not that anything happened, but it was just like here I am, we yeah, yeah. whole life to get to this place. And, you know, where do you go from here if it fails, you know, right? <laughs> and everything like that, you know, but I was never in the thing of failure because I always thought that I knew what was happening. At that point, I was totally prepared to go and do whatever they wanted me to do. And I met Miles and Miles was amazing to me, man. He was he was a hero, man. He was a great yeah. friend to me. I learned so much from him man. we used to hang out all the time. He loved my wife. We go over to his house and chill and oh, used to watch, the, watch the fights with him and make popcorn. We would put down tracks on his four tracks. 
and play and talk about music and everything. This went on for, you know, five years, you know what I mean? Jason, I've got like a thousand more questions I want to ask you, so we're going to right. have you back another time. Not a problem, man. <laughs> I'm happy to spend a few minutes out with my West Coast peeps. I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to come out here because, you know, because I've got this one-man show. Oh, right and on. I wanna go, and I want to go and, and do them out in California and go up the coast. So All right. whole thing clear, so I'm going to have my agent book some stuff. It's called uh, The Extraordinary Journey of Jason Miles, Musical Beautiful. Biography. And there'll be a book and a solo piano album with it and everything. Let us so know, there man. You go, we'd, man. We'd, we'd love to get you out here, so let us yeah, know. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Right. I'll be in, I, I can't do it long, but thanks for having me, guys, man. Thank you, know? you, Jason. I appreciate it. Have a great night, and, uh, you know, we'll see you down the road, man. Stay safe. Peace. Thanks. Bye. Sure. All right, folks. So that's going to wrap it up for us. We're uh, cutting now live to uh, the stage at Campus Jacks, and we're going to uh, – we're going to be visited by Lisa Dunkey and her band. And uh, you're going to enjoy this, so stick around for that. Thank you for watching. Terrence, get well. Uh, glad it's not COVID, but get well. We'll see you here next week. And thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. All right, we got one minute, I hear. Am I stalling for a minute? All right, well, for, I got one minute to tell you that November 5th, you should be attending my show with the Pretty Dang Good Band with Phil Canto and Grant Geisman and uh, uh, Sal Lozano and Lima Medeiros and John Ferraro. And that's going to be great. But there's also plenty of other shows you should be coming. So go to campusjacks.com. If, uh, if you have a second to go to steamersjacks.com and throw a little something in the tip jar to help keep these shows going, then please do that. We were, uh, you know, we ran out of time. We we're going to show a video of Jason playing. Uh, so we want to show you that soon. So maybe next week we'll even run the Jason Miles video so you can catch him playing but check him out now on youtube anyway but we're cutting the lead to donahue right now five four three two one live
you are oh my gosh thank you for for coming out to jazz beret at campus jacks tonight um if you didn't know what jazz beret is it's cabaret and jazz tunes in a jazzy sort of way yeah because i'm smart like that i figured that out anyway but i'm so glad you're here i am ready i have showered <coughs> just for you i didn't shave my legs though because winter's coming so i got all dolled up yep and not just from the waist up those zoom calls yeah <laughs> no, all together. I'm wearing my Spanx, tucked in, covering the COVID-10. <laughs> okay, 15. Okay, 25. Okay. Anyway, well, just for you, it was time to be together, right? And look at Campus Jacks did it. They did it. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> they figured it out. <laughs> Oh, did you like my crazy masks that I had yet? Yeah, I'm going to be modeling them all night because we're going to be wearing them for a while. And they're a fashion accessory anyway, too. So uh, I was just thinking the last gig that most of us did up in here was in March in L.A., a version of the show. And flash forward eight months later, here we are again. So that was opening night, and I guess this is closing night. So... You're welcome, everyone. You're here for that. Well, we're just glad you're here. Uh, you're in for a fun show tonight because it is going to be hot. One, two, one, two, three. It's too darn hot. It's too darn hot. I like to soap with my baby tonight. We fill the cup with my baby with my baby tonight refill the cup with my baby tonight but brother you are my baby tonight cause that's too darn hot it's too darn hot it's too darn hot i'd like to cool with my baby tonight and pitch the woo with my baby
Well, that was also the anthem theme song for menopausal women everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yes, thank you, David, for that. Well, so tonight we're mixing up a bit, too. We've got a little Broadway with a little jazz. You'll laugh, you'll cry, it'll be better than cats. <laughs> Poor cats. Not a high bar, I realize, but nonetheless a bar. No, I have to tell you, though, I, <laughs> I've learned not to judge cat people because I have turned into a cat person. Yes, we have stray cats we've been fostering, and we're crazy for them. <laughs> we're just crazy. We're crazy for a lot of things, actually. Take them. 
Thank you so much. That was Sexy Sex Man Kyle O'Donnell. That's your new name. Okay, can I call you that? Oh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, so well, now how many musical theater fans out there, right? Yeah, such a great escape. Uh, remember the days. Well, it, it was, it, it will be back. I just know it, so in time. But, well, I actually have to like musical theater because I am a gay man trapped in a woman's body. <laughs> My husband hates that joke. <laughs> Dexter. <laughs> I think it's fabulous. <laughs> anyway, well, one of my favorite Broadway musicals is one called How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. You remember that one, right? 1967, the film, of course, which I loved. Mary Blair did the set designs, Bob Fosse choreographed, and of course, the amazing Robert Morse played Finch. Uh, so talented he is. He sings this confident song in this number, I Believe in You. You have the cool, clear eyes of a seeker of wisdom and truth. Then there's that up, turn, chin, and the grin of impetuous youth. Judgment whenever you talk. Then there's that bold, brave spring, and a tiger that quickens your walk. my husband Dexter right we're going on 20 years of marriage next year yes exciting but it's always a but I do have a celebrity crush Tom Selleck <laughs> you got you right I, I know it's like you didn't clap for him yeah it's okay don't worry about those first those mortgage commercials reverse mortgage don't go there it's Tom Selleck you guys Dex knows that I love both Tom and him I mean look at this devotion Yes, it's my Tom Selleck mask. And my, to and my Tom Selleck hoodie, you guys. Look, come on, look at this! Woo! 
I'd wear a Dexter mask and hoodie, but they don't make them. Someone should get on that. No, seriously, though. I am married to the most tolerant, patient man there is. Uh, he puts up with my shenanigans and my jackassery. I'm really good at that, actually. Uh, and being the intuitive, smart woman, you know, that, I, that he married, of course, he knows that I'm always, I'm always right. Always. Right, Dexter? Anyway, mostly because I, I know exactly what's going on and what the problem is. Hmm. <laughs> You to smile, but you give me the frown. It's easy to see that the trouble with me is you. I'm taking you out, but you're taking me in. You're calling it quits when I want to begin. It's easy to see that the trouble with me is you. Just when I knew that my heart says go, you stop. Then when I start to feel high, you let me drop. With a flop. You're brushing me off and you're leading me on. You tell me to stay, then I find that you're gone. It's easy to see why I happen to be so blue. Because the trouble with me is you. how to get to the root of the problem there. Yeah. <laughs> well, now I would love to do a song off my Takes on Broadway album. Our friends in the ultra section here actually got their copy tonight. Kind of fun. Looks like this. It makes a good coaster, frisbee, or you could listen to it. That's fun, too. Anyway, you can actually find all three of my CDs on the iTunes and, you know, Amazons and in the back of the trunk of my car. So... <laughs> But anyway, oh, and only one, there's only 61 days shopping till Christmas, you guys. So I'm just saying, good stocking stuffers. Anyway, well, on that album, there are several classics. Uh, new Broadway, uh, old Broadway, um, and it's my take on all of them, so it's kind of fun. And here is a classic that I want to share with you. Me here 
present in bliss Don't you approve One who keeps tearing around One who can't move Where are the clouds? Send in the clouds Just when I start Thank you so much. You know, they say that you are the company you keep, and I'm the luckiest girl in the world to invite these next three people on stage to join me. Yes, Lindsay DeDoris, Billy Johnstone, and Eric Seppala. I love, hi, sister. I love that we all share this love of music together. Oh, hi. Oh, hey. Okay. Um, wow. Woo, all right. OK, um, anyway, uh, we'll sing together, but apart. Right? Okay. Anyway, now growing up, you guys, I love my record collection, right? Remember? Something so cool about the crackle in that vinyl. Oh, and I remember those stereo consoles that were like pieces of furniture. They were huge. They were huge. Oh, man, we had some great albums growing up. We did. I loved the groovy Latin vibe. And there were a couple of my favorites. Well, of course, I love Sergio Mendez. And do you remember this one? Tijuana Brass? Scandalous. That girl with the whipped cream. And all I could think about was, I love whipped cream. <laughs> She's pretty, though. Anyway. And then, of course, come on. Brazil 66, right? The best ever. Ah, oh, the days, you guys, of avocado green appliances, zebric wall coverings. We have those in my house. Shag carpet, jello molds, casseroles. Oh, my gosh. How about we throw it back, you guys, to the great sounds of Brazil 66. Love to you, and what man 
over here you know with those pants at the airport we're by the airport everybody yeah that was groovy oh I feel like I need my caftan right and a martini oh look what I have in my little ah a martini how about a toast everybody yeah everybody pick up your drinks Diet Coke's water it's all good because we are all here and I'm so grateful we're together uh, cheers to all of you to happy healthy lives and just being here showing up everybody I'm drinking a regular martini do you know what's in a regular martini it is vermouth and it is gin with a splash of Metamucil and instead of an olive it's a prune yeah a regular martini I found it in the AARP newsletter it's really bad oh David's laughing that means it's funny because he's my barometer there Teeny, the prune, not going to do it. Sorry, not going to do it. Uh, anyway, so, but I digress. <laughs> Girls, we get to sing together. I'm so thrilled for this. So this is a song that I did mm, 25 years ago when I was at Berkeley College of Music. Yes, Berkeley. Yes, I got some Berkeley. Patik and I went to Berkeley together. Yes, we survived it. The funny thing is, is Patik plays a ton of musical theater when we had it, and the joke was he hated it. I'm like, look who's doing the musical theater now, huh? It's fun. Anyway, and Dave went to Berkeley too. Anyway, this is our ode to love. Yes, enjoy. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Lindsay and Billy, my gal pals. <laughs> Billy is actually the better half to this guy uh, beating on the drums back here. <laughs> Dave Johnstone. Yes, she's amazing. She's a singer. She works full time. A mom to two great boys. She's like an Anjali commercial, right? Just splash it on her ankles and she goes, right? I love that. Lindsay is a music teacher. Uh, she was my ukulele teacher for a while. Yeah, I was okay. She's more amazing at it than I am. She teaches kids from ages three to 100 years old. Patience of Job, this woman. Anyway, both these women, they just inspire me and they're such dear friends. They're kind of those mom figures, you know? I don't have kids because why would I want to ruin this? <laughs> I mean, I work really hard at this, yes. Anyway, but, uh, but I am an auntie, that's kind of fun. And I'm an auntie to many of my friends' kids. With that, that's just the biggest blessing in the world and a role that I take very seriously. Not 
like yours, Lisa, in his life, your part is very small. But if one day a toy should break, or maybe plain patty cake, you call me mama by mistake. I won't mind. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> David's crying, we know. <laughs> oh, it's not a great song. I love a song that tells a story, uh, that takes you somewhere with a character that you've never been, gives you new perspective. Um, I'm also a sucker for a song mashup. Yeah, because all the kids are doing it today. Because uh, why sing one song when you can sing two, you guys? And for this one, I'm taking my chances. in my life, yes. Some are more memorable, you know, singing waiters, singing telegrams, but I spent five summers working at the Los Angeles County Fair and College where I was a singing and dancing stock of celery. You wish you were me. Yeah, and I have proof. That was cute, wasn't I? We were the salad bar delights, and we were Amazing, a nutritional show. Clearly, I've taken that nutrition to heart as an adult. 
I like donuts too much. Anyway, oh, I was so good I did impressions too. You want to hear one of my impressions? I was Gertie, Gertie the Celery. Here, here it goes, ready? Joan Rivers. Oh, can we stalk? Can we stalk? I'm going to go back to the regular martini poop joke, if that's okay. That one landed a little better, I think. Well, I'm sure that Streisand and Ella started this way, right? I'm sure. Probably not. Well, it was a really great time in my life, and I'm very grateful. And my good friend Ray O'Day is here tonight, who I spent all that time with. I'm so grateful. Yes. That woman taught me a lot of everything I know. I grew up in her performance group. It was amazing. Anyway, but uh, we would like to do this next song for you. so much memories you guys during this pandemic I've flooded with this nostalgia I'm loving remembering parts of my life and the wonderful people who many of you are in this space tonight um, I'm also taking the time to reflect on what is important to me right stand up for what I believe in fact yes David there's something that I feel truly passionate about I would like to share with you chicken ever do to you to deserve to be served yeah like that tied up on a platter come on think about the life you take each time you cut into a big fat steak only a meanie eats veal scallopini do you want to live your life like that no you can live without veal parmesan beef bourguignon Chicken tarragon, give up filet mignon. Life will still be sweet if you give up meat. It's easy. You can even try and give up bacon, bacon, fried ham on in a pan. Ba -ba 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 bacon, the taste, the touch. The smell of bacon. Mm -hmm. 
bacon. Even my Jewish friends love bacon. Shh. We're under the cone of Campus Jacks. It's cool. Nobody knows, except the people live streaming. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, I would love to bring up another bacon lover of mine, my good friend Eric Seppala. He introduced me to this song, and I am forever grateful. I kind of wish he would have sung about broccoli, because that's way well, healthy. I like the way you sing that. You know, you give a female perspective, because men relate to bacon differently. I yes. sing it as a searing, dramatic ballad, <laughs> of course. He does, he does. He's an am he amazing. Anyway, Eric, so what should we sing? Well, let's sing the song we rehearsed. I think that would be Oh, <laughs> yeah. I guess that's a let's good idea. Let's sing a Count Basie, Neil Hefty song. I love Count Basie. Yeah. Let's, uh, we'll be the horns, yeah? Should we do that? Well, let's do it all of it. the blues, baby and me, two for the blues, blue as can be, two for the blues, couldn't agree, two for the blues, indigo hue, now stop it you weeping and wailing, just making you blue, two the blues, what can we do? So kiss her and hug her and see if your troubles are few. Two for the blues, said we were through. Say, what's up, by the way? Other night, what you do? Had a fight, or in you, quite a spat. So what's you? And that was that. Now we're each so lonely, missing our one and only, wondering how to lose. Blues, blue as can be. 
Sundays, you guys, in my jammies by six, polishing off, you know, ding-dongs, wondering what to watch on Netflix. I like this way better. I hope you do, too. Gosh, we've covered some great tunes and genres tonight. We've had bosses and standards and waltzes and swing tunes and, oh my, we got to do a torch song. I, we got to do a torch song, you guys. I mean, who doesn't love a great torch song that takes your heart out and throws it on the ground and dumps on it? Ah, love, love. This song actually we're going to do was nominated for an Oscar, 1955, but it lost, yeah. Um, so although it was a loser, it's still a winner to me and one of the best Torch songs of all time. It's rougher, it's lonelier and tougher 
Thank you so much. So are you having a good time? Because we are just rounding the horn here. Yeah, we're at the closing song of the night. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I have to thank these amazing folks up here. We are the sum of all of our parts up here. That's right. And I am honored to share the stage with these talented musicians. So I would love to introduce the, the uh, musicians to you. Uh, Charlie, that's Kai. Have you guys met each other? OK, you're Kyle. Nice, to, yeah. It's the worst joke in the world, but I love it. Anyway, so yes, Charlie Morales we have on bone here. Oh, he's just getting a little sanitary spray. Very hygienic. Charlie's amazing on the trombone. Of course, we have Kai Palmer on trumpet. And then Kyle O'Donnell on saxophone, flute, clarinet, juice harp. I don't know. He probably plays everything. Uh, and back here in our rhythm section, we have my wonderful dear friend, Petit Desai on guitar. And holding us together here with a beat, we have Dave Johnstone, everybody. Yes. And we have bass mama back here, Sherry Lucetti. So talented, all of them. And over here on keys and counting us off and making sure we're all together is the amazing Mr. David Arana. Okay, you guys. We're in the presence of greatness because David Arana is Engelbert Humperdinck's MD. Yeah, that's music director. That's pretty cool. Th and he still plays them. They're doing, they're still, Engelbert's still going, which I love. You should go to his, one of his concerts. It's crazy. Women in the front row, they're 60s, 70s, they're throwing their Depends on stage. It's <laughs> crazy. It's crazy. That joke, yeah. And also, I gotta give it up for our amazing special guest singers tonight, Lindsay Dodoris, and we have Billy Johnstone and Eric Seppala. <laughs> just a couple more thank yous, because this just doesn't just happen, you know? Uh, Campus Jacks, Jasper Jack, uh, Jack Jasper, excuse me, and his amazing team and staff, Tim Ellis, thank you for having us. Terrence Love, Tony Guerrero, the Steamers Afterglow Artist Showcase folks. They bring a lot of amazing talent here, so make sure you follow them. Golden Audio uh, on sound, she's doing a great job. Markwood Entertainment, QSC, because they're on the sign, right? Yeah, they are, okay, they were. Yeah, anyway, uh, and all of your servers, everybody, they are trekking. <laughs> putting a lot of miles on their Fitbit tonight. Um, so please take care of them and thank them. Um, and thank you to each one of you for being here tonight. We are also grateful to spend this evening with you doing what we love. You are supporting live music and that means the world to us. So thank you. Now, I have to tell you, during the pandemic, I've been trying a lot of new things, right? Just trying to embrace things. And one of them is cooking. Any cooks out there? A cup, one, seriously. <laughs> I love the rest of you. Yeah, I should clarify though, I I've tried to cook and that didn't work out so I moved to microwaving and that failed terribly and then I went to toasting and I make a mean Pop-Tart. <laughs> yes, anyway. <laughs> so although, okay, I'm not a chef, oh, I can still cook. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sweet love. 
got a lot of crazy masks. Jeff Beret. Oh my gosh, you guys, what fun, what fun. Thank you again to each and every one of you for coming out tonight. Trusting Campus Jacks did the right thing. They've done such a great job. Um, yes. And to all of you who've joined us on the live stream, so great having you here in the comfort of your homes, in your jammies. How lucky. I'm in Spanx. I can't wait to get out of them. <sighs> anyway, I am, again, so grateful Campus Jacks can offer musical experiences in person and live streaming. So thank you again for being here, staying the course uh, so we can resume normalcy uh, sooner rather than later. Until we can be together again, everyone, my wish is that you stay happy and healthy and keep looking for the good around all of us. Thank you for coming. When all the world is a hopeless jumble And the raindrops tumble all around Heaven opens a magic lane the clouds darken up the skyway there's a rainbow highway to be found leading from your window pane to a place behind the sun Just a step beyond the rain. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you Why then, oh why?
Jumping at Jack's. 